Did you know that there is a game-changing rail project that's going to forever transform travel between Italy and France? Projected to be completed by 2032, this international rail line will connect Turin in Italy with Lyon in France. Spanning an impressive 270 kilometers, this project highlights the Mont dombain base tunnel, which on its own stretches a staggering 57.5 kilometers right through the Alps. This will make it the longest rail tunnel in the world, even longer than the Gotthard base tunnel in Switzerland. So how far has the construction progressed? What incredible benefits will this project bring to travelers and freight transport? And are there any major challenges that could derail its completion? But before we dive deeper, if you're fascinated by groundbreaking infrastructure projects and want to stay updated with the latest in engineering, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell icon. You'll be the first to know about the most incredible projects reshaping our world. Let's start with the costs and benefits. This project isn't cheap, with an estimated total cost of 25 billion euros. 8 billion of that is for the international section that is already underway. But the benefits are huge. Inspired by the Swiss NRLA project, this railway aims to shift freight traffic from trucks to rail, cutting CO2 emissions, and reducing local air pollution. Plus, it'll offer a faster, more eco-friendly way for passengers to travel, cutting down on air travel. Imagine traveling through the Alps with significantly shorter journey times. And for freight, this means heavy trains can travel at 100 km per hour with lower energy costs thanks to the line's gentle gradients and wider curves. The railway's design truly deserves its high-speed label, with 220 km per hour being just below the European Commission's 250 km per hour threshold for high-speed railways. The European Union is heavily invested in this project, funding 40% of the tunnel costs, and they might increase their support to 55%. It is part of the 10T Trans-European Conventional Rail Network's Mediterranean Corridor. The EU is also ready to help fund the French sections as long as those go beyond just upgrading the existing infrastructure. With such strong backing, this massive endeavor is split into three distinct sections, each with its own management team. First, the French section runs from the Saint-Jean-de-Maurienne just outside Lyon and is managed by SNCF Réseau. Over in Italy, the segment from Busoleno in the Susa Valley to Torino is overseen by RFI. But the best part is the international portion, which includes the vital Mont d'Ambain base tunnel and extends to Busoleno. This section is a joint effort by Tunnel Europin Lyon Turin, a collaboration between RFI and SNCF. Let's focus on the Mont d'Ambain base tunnel, the Turin Lyon high speed railway project star. This tunnel is the principal engineering challenge of the entire endeavor and is set to be the longest rail tunnel in the world once completed. Back in 2019, it was estimated that constructing this colossal tunnel would take about 10 years. However, the project has faced significant opposition, mainly from the No TAV movement. These protests led to a crucial change in the tunnel's design. Its length was increased from 52 kilometers to a staggering 57 and a half kilometers to address concerns in the Susa Valley. Once it's up and running, the Mont d'Ambain base tunnel will surpass other impressive tunnels like the Goddard base tunnel, the Brenner base tunnel, Japan's Seikan tunnel, the Channel tunnel, and South Korea's Yulhyeon tunnel. That's a lot of competition, but Mont d'Ambain will take the crown. The tunnel will stretch between Saint-Jean-de-Maurienne in France and Susa in Italy. One of the unique challenges is the geology near the French portal, which is made up of fractured and sheer coal-bearing schists. This type of rock is unsuitable for tunnel boring machines, so the team must use the traditional drilling and blasting method for the first 5km section. Now, the French section is designed with separate paths for both passengers and freight, enhancing efficiency and safety between Lyon and the Maurienne Valley. For passengers, this line will seamlessly link the LGV Sud-Est and Central Lyon stations to destinations in Italy and Chambéry. This means you can expect to save almost 45 minutes when traveling from Paris or Lyon to Aix-les-Bains or Chambéry and nearly an hour to Annecy. But that's not all. This new line is set to reduce congestion on the Lyon-Grenoble line, making room for more local train services. So not only do you get faster travel times, but you also benefit from more train options for your daily commute. So how has the construction been progressing so far? It all began back in 2002 with the initial civil engineering work, which included building access points and conducting geological reconnaissance tunneling. The actual tunnel construction was initially slated to start around 2014 or 2015, but the project only got the green light in 2015 with a hefty budget of 25 billion euros. 
including 8 billion earmarked for the base tunnel. The international treaty needed for this project was finally ratified by the parliaments of Italy and France, culminating in a decisive vote by the French Senate on January 26, 2017. Even before this official ratification, progress was already being made. In 2016, a 9-kilometer gallery was tunneled from Saint-Martin de la Porte towards Italy, and this was labeled a reconnaissance gallery, but it was dug along the tunnel's south tube's final path and diameter. Late in 2016, the project hit a major snag. A geologically tough zone full of fractured, water-soaked coal-bearing schists. This slowed progress to a crawl for several months. However, in spring 2017, after injecting 30 tons of reinforcing resin, the team broke through and resumed normal speed. The gallery was completed in September 2019, on time and within budget, marking the first 9 kilometers of the South Tube. The project then faced political hurdles. Disagreements within the Italian coalition government led to Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte asking Telt to halt further construction tenders in March 2019. Thankfully, just in time to secure crucial EU funding, the Italian government gave the green light, and by June 2020, 2.8 billion euros in construction contracts were signed. By September 2021, additional contracts worth 3 billion euros for the French side were also in place. Fast forward to December 2022, drilling and blasting began for the 3-kilometer Lot 3 section from the French portal, advancing about 400 meters on each tube within a year. Other French work sites are gearing up for the 2024 arrival of five tunnel boring machines built by Herring Connect, a German company. These TBMs were delivered between July 2023 and February 2024 for in-factory tests. In August 2023, Telt awarded the contract for the 25 kilometers of tunneling on the Italian side and published a call for tender in June 2023 for the tunnel's outfitting and maintenance for its first seven years of operation. So far, the base tunnel's expected completion date is 2032. It's been a long journey filled with challenges and triumphs, but the progress is nothing short of impressive. By the time it's finally complete, the Mont Dombin base tunnel is expected to mean fewer trucks and more trains on both sides of the border if it stays on schedule. This project has faced numerous delays, mainly due to financial setbacks over the years. But here's the big question. Will it still be seen as beneficial to the environment as it was envisioned in the 1990s, once completed in 2032? Stefan Cugino, the general delegate of La Transalpine Leon Turin, strongly supports the project. He highlights the urgency, saying there are 3 million trucks passing between France and Italy every year. If you don't dig tunnels, you keep the trucks on the roads. That sounds like a win for reducing road traffic and pollution, right? However, environmentalists raise serious concerns. Drilling a tunnel on the French-Italian border poses a significant threat to water resources, which are already under immense strain. Alberto Poggio from the Mountain Union of Val de Susi's Technical Commission shares some alarming data. We've calculated that the construction of the entire turin leon line will result in a net contribution of 10 million tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Estimates indicate that 600 to 1,000 liters of water per second will be discharged from the tunnels during the work. It's a bit like a large part of Turin or a large part of Lyon running out of water. So while the tunnel promises to shift freight traffic from trucks to trains, reducing road congestion and emissions, it also brings significant environmental challenges. So, will the Mont Dombin base tunnel and the entire Turin Lyon high speed railway live up to its promise of transforming European travel, or will it face insurmountable challenges along the way? What do you think? Will the benefits outweigh the environmental concerns? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. We'd love to hear them. And please help our channel and make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell icon. You'll be the first to know about the most incredible projects reshaping our world.